I was led to believe that my perception was perfect, but maybe it is, in actuality, biased. There is a difference between what I know and what the reality is. If my perception is only a fragment of the truth, can I trust my understanding of reality? Hey, there, there's a question I wish most human beings would ask themselves. Somewhat, but not entirely. They're both kind of the same thing. I'll, I'll hit somewhat. I can, but. somewhat. Though I must always be aware of my own subjectivity. As long as I keep that in mind, I will be able to fill in what I am missing. Reality has many layers. I understand that now. You hear that, folks? Reality is like onions. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome back to Perispera. This is uh, the next to last video uh, for the series until the full game embargo is released uh, and I'm able to play it. <laughs> uh, basically, I'm permitted to give you the first five hours of gameplay. I've been trying to structure my videos to about 40 hours, so six videos is going to equal about five hours. So that's, uh, that's the way it is. Yep, there you go. So um, I guess it's kind of weird that by hours and not by story progression, but uh, hey, I don't make the terms. I just have to follow them. So we'll have maybe one more video after this, and then we're kind of good. So let's see if we can get anything done in... Uh, See how much we can get done in that five hours. So, uh, I'm looking at my power grid, and it seems scrumptious now, huh? We actually have a surplus now. Pretty nice. I've laid in some a few more mines, and uh, we're starting to generate some pretty good resources. Um, however, I'm, uh, I'm still noticing that uh, stuff is building really slowly. And I can only attribute this to having only one factory of each type to generate for resources. So I'm looking at my supply right now, and aluminum is good for now, but uh, silicon, silicon's not doing well. And iron will not do well if I add another steel factory. So I wanna add some more silicon, and then I wanna generate more glass, because that's been stopping me from uh, manufacturing things. Oh, you, you are not in the power grid. No, you are not. Also, there's carbon out this way, too. Why don't we get a carbon mine here? And we'll get a worker hub popped in between these two. Uh, like that. And then we'll get a solar panel out this way to uh, join all of them to the grid. Which I hear is a beautiful digital frontier. Which is kind of like this, honestly. I like to picture clusters of information. You know, like that whole spiel. You know? Beginning of Tron. No? Didn't pick that up? I hope some of you did at least. Hey, did that other maintenance building get built? It did indeed. So, our maintenance right now, if we look at what's being covered, we do have a couple of structures now that are falling outside it. So, we will want to make another one, and we're also going to want one out here. So... Let's put another maintenance facility kind of out this way. You can connect it right here how to do it. That puts this. Ah, extra storage is complete. We're gonna look at that in a second. Um, but, ooh, E01. So I don't need everything in the, in, in the Z, in the E, in the E, the era, maybe. I don't need everything in there to move on to the next one, but we can do faster roads. Ooh, Hyperloop. I'm glad they call it that. Um, factory upgrades is pretty cool. Mine upgrades sounds pretty interesting. Um, there's also three different categories, which I have initially I missed. Um, so there's engineering, which is where we are now. Then there's space, which, like, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. There's no scrolling as far as I can tell, so this is the entirety of the tree. Um, but, of course, it's tabbed. And then you have biotech, which starts us off with black polar dust. And that is what we need to get started on terraforming. Spark, uh, sparkle black dust in the poles to decrease the planet's albedo. So black polar dust in the poles to decrease their albedo and as such absorb more solar energy and raise the global temperature. So this is the, 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 the part of terraforming. We need to raise the temperature, melt the ice, right? And uh, that is something that we can do. And then of course, colony two, which just uh, increases 
I think I have to make a new colony, or it looks to me like there's an upgrade system in this. We can upgrade an existing col a colony, which I was really hoping that we could be able to do, and I kind of want to see how that works. So why don't we invest our research points into things that can get us more research points? Hmm? Make your money work for you kind of thing? Yeah. Um, terraforming plan initiated, it says. Uh, the first stage in the terraforming plan consists of liberating all the CO2 that is trapped as CO2 ice in the polar ice caps of Mars. This can be done in multiple ways, ranging from releasing greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, like we do on Earth all the time, to, build in, uh, to building a space mirror array that will focus solar energy in the caps. The decision is up to you, but keep in mind, each technology needs to be f uh, further developed by the scientists in your colonies. Once the CO2 in the caps start subl sublimating, it will further increase the planet's temperature, creating a runway effect until the caps have disappeared completely, like we're doing on Earth. <laughs> when this happens, this stage is fulfilled. <laughs> uh, all right, so I wanna, I wanna, I wanna get this. Ooh, we have storage center now, huh? Hey, is this? How much of this stuff gets? You know what? Why don't we? Put storage center here. Sounds interesting. We can put one right here. Or not. Ah, there we go. Uh, I'll put another one uh, probably like right over here. There's some, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's happening here. This is pretty connected. Let's do it there. And I want to do one more probably out this way. All right. So there's three of those. Then I want a maintenance facility. I know I'm doing it again. Oh, we're going super, super into it. Um, I want to make sure that that mine is covered. Because right now, these other two don't cover that one. So I'm just going to make sure that that's covered right about like that. Sounds good. To fully right. terraform Mars, we must convert the planet into an Earth-like habitat. The first step is to raise the planet's temperature above minus 50 degrees Celsius. At that point, Nearly all the carbon dioxide trapped in the dry ice caps will be released. And about like that. All right. So we've got a whole lot of buildings queued now. Whole lot of buildings queued. That needs to be a big priority because I need power for all these buildings I just queued. So any existing out or I guess outstanding, any outstanding solar needs to be done uh, kind of now. And maybe we even go as far as to. I don't know if we're gonna be expanding out this way. I love the F4, F4, F3. To, I, I love that you can just see data all the time, right? A computer would see data all the time. I love it. Access to data in this game is very well done. And going along that note, why don't we use some of that data? So we are currently 85% efficient in iron. We are currently 61% efficient in carbon, but we're still over the demand. That's the, that's the important thing. Um, we are not over the demand in silicon. But I am expanding our power grid right now uh, to accommodate more silicon mines. And if there are any other silicon sources, I will be able to take advantage of them if they exist. Which currently, I do not see them existing in my on my radar. So, for the time being, probably should use this, right? For the time being, I don't think I can actually place a silicon mine anywhere. Since there is no more... Silicon deposits on the map. Correct. Also, big impact point happening there. And it looks to me like this is... What's going on here? Dawes Crater. Maybe this is a storm? I don't know. Right now we're getting 15.6 RP per month. Is there a way to increase that aside from... Well, I don't know. Is there a way to increase that? Actually, that's, there's that impact. Um, zoom out really quick. Okay, so they went all the way back to Earth already. The, the, the ship is gone. Uh, it will probably return with another 100, I would assume, but I, I don't know that. Possibly. Return with more. We have 78 capacity. This is, this is, this is great. 78 capacity. 
Um, are we good with carbon? We're actually overproducing carbon quite a bit, supposedly. Even though we don't have a whole lot. Oh, carbon is right here. Yeah. Yeah, well, we still are. Yeah. Uh, electronics are good, although it's like right on demand now. Steel's good. Glass is good. Uh, polymers is way good. Food is actually starting to get a little restricted. And we're making lots of chemicals and stuff, right? Chemicals and water. We're going to need more water. I have the overage right now, so why don't we go ahead and destroy that solar farm. And we'll replace it with another one located here instead. Make that be a big priority. Uh, and then I can go ahead and grab this water source. Well, only after the deconstruction is fully completed can I grab that water source. Come on now. And water extractor there. Okay. Okay. That's going to be the priority still. The carbon dioxide released from the dry ice caps will greenhouse the planet and trigger a runaway effect. And Mars's sterile atmosphere will change forever. Once we reach that point, there is no turning back. Forever. Why does that sound so intriguing? This building sounds and looks intriguing. <gasps> because it's permanent. There's no turning back because it's permanent. That's right. I am leaving a permanent trace. Mm -hmm. It may be selfish, but Mars will never be the same, and it will be because of me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking at the top of the screen now, and we have a terraforming stage, bootstrapping. Also, we know to pop. We want to populate this lab in the research location. Um, where is that again? Over here. Yeah. There's a research outpost right here. It looks like we're researching things, right? Perseverance rover, yeah. Population is only two. Ah, so are people making their way over here? It says there's zero incoming, so I don't know, maybe not. But uh, this is the Perseverance rover. It looks like it's going to take 2,060 souls to get all the research off of this thing uh, at the current pace with only two people there. I would assume then that we will be able to do it 25 times faster than this if we filled the population. Uh, so based on that, I would say it's supposed to take uh, very little souls. Very cool, a couple months at most. Just have to fully fully staff the place. And I, so I, going along, I know, I don't know if I'm actually gonna get this done, right? Uh, the other note is, how are we doing on food? Okay, our demand for food has just surpassed our capacity to create it. So. It is time to create another food factory. And I'm going to do it kind of right over here because I think I want the next colony to be right over here. So food factory is going to go... Actually, where are where are the chemicals all being drawn in at? Is it this one? No. I think it's this one. Where are all the chemicals being done? Got a water extractor, water, maintenance facility. That, you know, I probably should put it in where this maintenance facility is. So it can just be covered by it. Although, I, I feel like even if I was to put it, it's still covered. Yeah, this is covered. and Yeah, this is where I want it. Let's put the food factory right here. It's also right next to the storage center. So that's great for like the overflow. And then uh, we're going to put another colony down. And I think I want to put it... I think I'll put it right here. Hmm... Yeah, I think we'll put it right here. So there is the start of colony number two in that regard. Which will be pretty nice to have. And do you see how macro... Like, this this game is going to be so big, right? Like, we're going to be like, okay, cool. You, you think this is... Like, this, this is... We're pretty spread out, right? But, like... We're really not even scratching the surface. Okay, I, I think we're, we're scratching the surface. That's what we're doing. But we want to melt this. Oh my god. It's like, it's just data, right? You don't see the ground, you just see data. <laughs> That's good. I like it. Um, now, somebody said C is the way you center. So if you're playing the game too, uh, if, you, uh, if you want to center on your colony, you just hit C. 
and it centers you back to your landing site zero, which is nice. Knowing this, I still contest that having customizable hotkeys as well as the ability to have more hotkeys uh, would be better. Uh, because, unless it's F5 and 6 and stuff, uh, what's F5 doing? Whoa, what is F5? Is this like a temperature? Oh, it's temperature overlay. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So things are not bad. As we scroll, it gets really cold up here. Yeah. So what we want to do is right now, it looks to me like right now it's it's 30 degrees Celsius, right? Also, uh, just as a little note uh, on the UI here, uh, only because I know one of the devs watch, um, temperature, kind of like maybe just a tad bit too big for the interface. I am playing at 4K, so per perhaps uh, 4K resolution wasn't considered on the scaling, but... Uh, there you go. It's a little bit of an overflow there. Come on, guys. I, I want to know when I get more colonists. Do I get more, like, every couple years? Yeah, ongoing migration. So they're coming back again. And we're just going to add them. I can't add them yet. Why not? Do I not have a landing pad working anymore? This will be a nice upgrade for the colonies. They will be able to fit more people. Cool. Compiling autosave. I love it. There we go. So now we can fit more people. And I, I love how... I, I, I assume anyway, right? Because these colonies are actually pretty small. Like, relative to all these other buildings, the colonies are really tiny. Right? But... I suspect that they are underground. Right? Or maybe people are just really small. Like, are people really that small? Well, this is an airship. So, like, yeah, people are really that small. Dude, these these rovers are enormous. These things are, like, like the largest tanks ever. <laughs> They're so big. And yet, they look so tiny, like toys. Aluminum, carbon. We're, uh, we're really good on glass now. And we're still meeting great efficiency with silicon. Excellent with glass. We have so much carbon. We don't need any more carbon. Actually, because of all the carbon we have. Can we find another iron mine yet? I want another iron mine so bad. Iron is like eluding me. It's doing such a good job. Oh, there we go. Right there. Let's get that done. And then with that going, I want another steel factory. I'm not sure where to put it. We have three steel factories here. Um, maybe we'll put it here. It's kind of like with these other two iron sources here. And it's near the, near the storage center too. So I think we'll pop this right here. And we'll get that rocking too. But as long as this, I, I get this iron mine done and then actually, are you in the power grid? Barely looks good. So this gets running and then, uh, Hopefully we'll be able to, oh, we need more power. More, expand the grid. Expand it. This is good. So I don't know what the, I don't know what the, uh, what the reason was for, for the five hour limit. But um, I think what we'll end up doing is We'll record this, right? Because this is clearly a full series now. I mean, I've put full game on the thumbnails. I'm putting numbers on them and sent some playlists and all that stuff. Um, however, um, it's going to be a, quite a big break between videos, right? So there is a case to be made. Um, like I'm not, I'm not sure how to how to approach that because I am I'm going to get to a point where I can't play anymore. I'm not going to be able to continue it for you, right? So do we just Record all we can, and then we'll just count on coming back later. Or, you know, when we come back later for the full game, it's going to be December. It's not that far away, right? Maybe at that point, we just uh, we just pick up where we left off, and we just say, yeah, there was a little bit of a lull in videos, right? I I'm, I'm leaning towards that second one, rather than, like, starting over with a full release. But, you know, like I said, the things are subject to change. It may, not, it may change balance. It may change... We may change all sorts of things, and um, 
I think I want to do... Yeah, I think I'm going to put another one way out here. Yeah, way out like that. And that one's going to be... So let me let me know your thoughts, like how you want to proceed with this. Do we just we just make videos right now? We'll have like one more after this, and then uh, you know we'll go on hiatus for. I guess it's just two weeks. Yeah, it's just two. Wow, it's the twentieth of November already. Holy. Humanity's reasons for altering Mars are clear, but what is my purpose in all this? Uh, humanity's reasons for altering Mars are clear. But what is my purpose in all this? Hmm. To prove that I exist? Create something. Yes. This is very human. This is very like humans. Because it will be my doing. I am an agent of creation. Yes, I am. Changing a planet forever. Creating an atmosphere to sustain life. That is truly something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I still like the idea of, like, Robot Overlord, but some of you guys have said, you know, work with them and cohesive and stuff. I want to do a mixture of those things. I'm not going to go Overlord, but, um, like, I'm going to work with them nicely as an end to a means of creating something cool, right? It's like terraforming Mars... And making it habitable for these humans, it's like a hobby, you know? It's like a pet project of mine. It just seems like something, you know, to test my skills kind of thing. And, I, you know, I may have to put up with them for a while. I may have to work with them for a little bit. Um, you know, I need them. I do. So I'm going to use them because they come up with some things. And I can use those to fulfill my mission. Which, which is to terraform Mars, which was given to me by humans. Uh, but we're going to ignore that last part, because uh, it's my mission. <laughs> so, uh, I think I'm going to go with that. So, iron is now at a deficit, big time. Because I just put that steel factory in. But, is this is this built yet? Yeah, this is built, but is it does it have power? You have power now? Oh, right. It wasn't about the range. It was about the capacity. We didn't have the capacity. Now we're going to, and we're going to have a lot more because this is getting built now. So I love how, like, as you snowball this, you get more and more capacity to do more and more things. And then you just keep going, right? And then, like, if I want to scan further, take a look at the scanning. These things can't really scan very fast. And I would like to progress out this way. I mean, I'll never get there until the full release of the game. But, um, like, I'd like to get out this way. And there's also very little here as far as resources goes. So it might be a cool idea to look into, you know, possibly starting factories and stuff out this way. Because we're not taking up any resource. And then I'm also, sus I'm also suspecting that... Um, you know what? I'm actually suspecting I'm going to need a maintenance center here, too. Let me put maintenance right here. Right next to that. I'm also suspecting that new types of resources might eventually be something we discover. I, I don't know that. But, um, like, bioengineered lichen, plants, um, oxygen release plants, which is kind of cool. Greenhouse gas factories. Open city is, like, the big one, right? You want to be able to bioengineer animals and open your city up where you don't need the dome anymore, right? That kind of thing. Uh, we can import nitrogen from Titan, import ice from Europa, right? Which is like weird. Like we're going to go all the way out to Titan to get this stuff. I mean, yeah, I guess it's probably, it's not, I wouldn't say it's cheaper than bringing it from Earth, uh, but it's certainly more sustainable. And, I mean, it may be cheaper. I don't know. I mean, we don't exactly have a ton of nitrogen here. Um, not like not like Titan. So, yeah. I mean, maybe. I'm digging this, though. And See? We're getting close to our water. Hang on. Let's see if we can find another water. More water to extract from. Any more water. I dropped that one, but that's apparently not enough. It's right here underneath that worker factory. 
I'm kind of thinking we move the worker factory. Did I make another one? So if I go to worker factory, it'll highlight two of them. See how it kind of puts this little square on them? It lets me know that there's already those there. So I'm going to go ahead and tear this one down. When I tear this down, do I get everything that's in storage? I would hope that I get all of the stuff in storage too. Let's tear this down. Bring it all the way down, and then we're going to extract that water. Look at him just bringing everything right in there. Colony 2 is done. Small colony with room for 250. Beautiful. Um, let's look at... I want to kind of work... I kind of want to look at wind turbines. But this is the start of the terraforming thing, so why don't we get the black polar dust? And then... Uh, yeah, as soon as this is gone, there we go. See how it reevaluates the paths? Oh, I love it. <laughs> uh, all right, now we're at a building limit. Now, I don't know. This has got to be like a temporary thing, right? Building limits. Because, I mean, there ain't no way 100 buildings, you know what I mean? At the building limit already. So, there must be some sort of milestone or research or something that will allow me to do more buildings. Because this landing site, maybe this is, it's 100% load. Yeah. So, this is all that I can support. So, is there research that will allow me to have more buildings? Batteries. Uh, I don't... See, well, maybe this. Launch additional landing sites in order to create new faraway base. Oh. Maybe this is it. The, each landing site can support 100. And in order to make more, I need another landing site. That makes sense. Okay. So we want that research next. But at the moment, that means I can't add anything new. Which is okay. Because, I mean, I think where our production is pretty good. Where it is. Right? We've done all the resource, all the resources. We've got efficiency going up on silicon. So we're over production on that. Uh, iron is a little bit deficient right now. But, um... Um... Perhaps that'll change, actually. We just got rid of a factory. Oh, steel. That would, that would affect steel, right? Is there a way to set production limits? Like, for example, if I... Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this, guys. You can set an allocation percentage per resource. So you can say, hey, electronics. Let's make sure we're using the percentage of our electronics goes towards certain things. Right? Like, for example, right now I don't need any more workers. So I could make sure that they don't go to this and it raises the percentage of in just that resource, right? So, carbon, for example. You can say, hey, what do we want carbon for? Well, I really want to make steel. So, let's put a little bit more of our carbon towards steel. That's sick. Oh, you micromanagers. Oh, the, you, all you people who like to min max. You are going to love this game. Oh, all you numbers people out there. It is clear that the people who made this game are numbers people. Because they have paid really well, really good attention to the monitoring of numbers. Now, I'm pretty sure. Did it upgrade existing? So this does not have... This doesn't have that, but I can upgrade it. There it is. It will consume more power, but it has more capacity. Am I able to do this? It doesn't let me click it. So, is it going to do this automatically? Or, oh, there's this button. Oh, okay. There's this button here. This looks like a button. Like an arrow. I thought I could click this. It's more intuitive for me to click that, I think. Uh, but I'll click this instead. Okay. Yeah. 
So that'll get that up to updated. And then, uh... There's another colony over here somewhere. I, be I made two. Yeah, right here. Let's upgrade both of them. I want to know if they change. If the way they look. Okay, yeah, kinda. It adds, like, another dome over here. And expands it. So they're gonna actually look different. That's cool. Now they have expanded capacity. And look at this. We can now carry... We can now do 550 now. Is the other one upgraded now, too? Yeah, already. See? We can now have... We now have capacity for 550 people. So I say to you, Earth... Bring them on. Bring me them. Bring all of them. How many of you are coming in? On the on the next airship. Is there anybody for me to see that? Incoming? So the average temperature right now. Yeah, average temperature is negative 60 degrees Celsius. Yeah. So we want to release greenhouse gases. We want to, you know, get the whole carbon dioxide thing. And the black polar dust will hopefully help us with that. Although I have no idea how to execute it. Maybe our next landing site. Because we can have several, right? We can just plop it down, I think, wherever we want. Which is so cool. Oh my gosh, you can have all these different landing sites. And they're all doing their own thing. They all have their own self-contained, you know... Like, they're, they're self-sufficient. And then maybe, like, you could put one in here. Like, let's say I put one here, and I make it all self-sufficient here, and that's awesome. I could also put one right here, and then expand out to just meet up with the other ones. But then my question becomes, will there be trade between landing sites? Can I have landing sites specialize and move them between different landing sites. Ah. Because if this game works the way I suspect it does, if I had another landing site right here, and I expanded all the way out here to where some of the buildings from this were kind of intermingled with these, I suspect, and maybe if I'm wrong, oh, I hope I'm wrong, but if I'm wrong, then great. But I suspect this rover will not bring resources to any building that was built with that landing site. I suspect that these are completely self-contained things and that the things being controlled and managed by this will not interact directly with anything controlled and managed by this. I hope I'm wrong on that because I'm thinking mega civilization with huge clusters of things and all sorts of scientists and stuff. And it can happen, but if I have, like, a shortage of resources over here for something, and I've got a surplus over here, man, would it be cool to just, like, be able to send them things, you know? So hopefully that's a thing. Oh, man, I don't know. Like, I haven't, uh, to be honest, I haven't done a whole lot of research on this game. And uh, when, when, it was, when it was approached to me, or when, it, when I was contacted regarding it, it's, uh, I kind of looked at it and went, yeah, all right. I mean, another Mars colonization game. Um, yeah, I guess I'll get right on that. You know, in my head, I'm thinking, uh, another Mars game? I've kind of really done a lot of Mars, and I'm already planning another Surviving Mars series. So I, uh, I don't know, man. Like, another one? Do we need another one in our, in our lives right now? The answer is yes, by the way. <laughs> we definitely need another one in our lives. Absolutely. So... In case you were wondering, that that is that is true. And apparently, Perspera, it, it, it really is. Uh, we found two iron sites, and it's right next to this. No! Oh, that's so annoying. Oh, that's so annoying. Oh, come on. My opinion. My opinion. The circle zone that needs to be around a building is too big. This this should work. Look at that. That should work. But it doesn't. I have to tear that whole thing down and rebuild it now. Lame. Oh, my God. Another one. Okay. Look at all this iron. 
Oh, the iron is right here, guys. There's all the iron. We found all the iron. We found it. If you were curious on where the iron was, well, be curious no more. All right, building limits reached. Yeah, building limits reached. Let's have this go 16 times speed. And uh, see if we can get the... Actually, I probably should have had that going for a while. We're doing 22 now. More than we were doing before. How is food, though? It looks like we're not pr we're not producing enough food. We're producing, we're producing a lot of polymers. Um, we're producing more than more polymers. Actually, that's how you do it, right? Allocation. We don't need polymers manufacturing. Let's bring this down and have more of our chemicals being allocated towards food manufacturing, right? Because we don't need as many polymers. We're good, and then. We won't overproduce them anymore. This will start going down because we don't have the supply, right? I I, I think that we're going to start seeing this go down. And then, um, you know, food should start going up, hopefully. Unless it's going... Yeah, it's going for water, right? So, uh, water, we want um, just a little bit more on the food. Yeah, just a, just a little bit more for food, Okay. So let's see if building new buildings, right? Is it even required? Let's see. Iron is being drained too. We're really low on that. Is it because of, let's bring it down. We don't need special projects. Um, let's make sure we're putting more of it towards steel manufacturing, which may or may not, that may or may not solve it. I don't know. Steel. Steel is going to go towards construction upgrades more. I don't know. This is kind of a weird one because it's like the final resource. I'd rather go wherever it needs to go, you know? All right, so chemicals. Efficiency's going up. Water. Starting to go up a little bit. Maybe. Food. Are we gonna Are we going to see this go up? I don't know. It kind of depends on what the, you know, the outputs of other buildings too, right? So like, just because I tell this to allocate more towards that doesn't mean that we're going to be able to use it, you know? Because right now, what we likely, what likely is the case is we have the ability to deliver more inputs, as you can see, but we're limited by our output. So the food factory population, we'll go by that, the population of the food factories is ultimately the reason why we're not producing enough. So we would want more buildings, which leads me back to my point with, can the other, can the land things communicate with each other and we can have an interconnected network where everything's being brought in. So if, like, if I wanted more food being brought into this colony, I could manufacture it. I could have a dedicated food place, right? Or in this case, like potentially a dedicated mining colony because like look at all the sources we have right in this small area i could have one of these just maybe i could turn them over that would be kind of interesting like if this one is let's say we're over here and we're doing our thing and we got this little colony and it's right here and it's great but i want to expand over this way could i like say hey that's this building um look i, I want to expand that way but clearly i can't do it with this one it's too far away so can I have this building now turned over control to this? Let's turn over control of this building to the other landing site. And that way it'll free up the supply, you know? So that I can build that other thing over there. Stuff like that. I don't know. It's an idea. Because you know, I'm, I'm at the power limit now. I'm at the, sorry, the building limit. So I can't actually place these, even if I wanted to. And I do want to. I want to place a uh, food. So I guess... Um, but this time around, since I can't place any more buildings, why don't we go ahead and get rid of the scanner? I don't really need scanning done right now because I can't use it anyway. This will be useful, but I will need to replace the dust occasionally as the winds blow it away. Um, what will be useful? That's the other thing too. A lot of times she'll reflect on things and i don't know what she's reflecting on what will be useful 
She just said this will be useful. You know? Perhaps, like, uh, pinging the map somewhere and having it, like, pulse so I know what she's talking about. Kind of like the whole she found things. Investigate location. I, I don't know what that means. Um, it could be any location. So maybe that's what it means. Maybe it means any location. But when she says this, that implies something specific and not just any generic, you know, thing. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud now. So now that we are under the building limit. Okay. Once this is completely demolished, we'll be under the building limit. In which case, then I can put in another food factory to help satisfy the needs of our two colonies. And I'm thinking probably right here. Right in this little zone here, if it'll let me do it. Because it's black polar dust is done. Sparkle black dust in the poles to decrease the planet's albedo. Okay. Albedo? Albedo? Libido? Hmm. The planet's libido, guys. Um, Colony 3. Uh, I'm not sure which one I want. Oh, right. These. Landing sites, of course. Duh. Let's do that. Uh, and then... Food factory. Yep. As soon as that building is demolished, I'm at 99 now. So, I should be able to place food factory right there. Right there. So I should be able to place this, and uh, we should see our food productions are going up. See, potential demand or potential production just went up, right? That's what we wanted. And then it looks like I need to produce more iron, too. So I might want to take a mine from something that I'm... Like an aluminum mine, maybe? Maybe remove one of the aluminum mines and replace it with an iron mine. So we'll find an... Aluminum mine somewhere. Silicon mines. Mm, we could go to the building list. I could I suppose I could find that. Mines. Find aluminum mine. I wish I could click this and get well, okay, never mind, I can do that. Mm, I don't want to do that one. I want ones that are kind of far out. So they're not as convenient to get to like this one here this is a good one to destroy let's go ahead and take this one down and so we'll replace that with an iron mine since we're overproducing on that other resource anyway and then i'll pop this iron mine right here and then it just it's covered by the repair and all that stuff and uh actually if i did it if i did it here I think it's technically closer to the factory. Yeah, it's closer to the factory this way. Unless it creates a road here. If it does that, then we're good. But it does not. It goes that way. I think this is technically closer. So I'm going to drop that iron mine now. And hopefully we can increase our production that way. And I think that's the last bit. I think that's the last thing. That'll kick our production over demand. And after that... Pretty much, oh, chemicals just got major upgraded on demand. Whoa. Well, that's because people just arrived. Yep. More people have arrived. And now it becomes clear that I have to have another, like I have to have another hub landing site. So that would be theoretically the best thing to do. There's another landing site. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. And that way I have enough time in my five hours to do one more for you. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. If you like the video, you know what to do. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to see you uh, in, the, uh, in the next video. It's been fun. Bye-bye.